Look at the ships also, though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So we know that the rudder is in the back of the boat. And so you have this huge boat and this little rudder. And the rudder is really the one guiding and directing. I think we have a picture there. Now it's funny, that's a huge boat. There's like, if you look there on that rudder, there are four, four people sitting on the back of that rudder. That shows you how big that boat is. And the rudder, the rudder itself is what's really gonna say go left, go right. The, on, the, on the horse, the bit is really what's guiding, saying go left and right. What is he saying? Your words are actually creating direction for your life. Now, James, if we were to extend that analogy though, there's the bit in the horse of the mouth did I say that right? In the mouth of the horse? In the mouth of the horse. There's a bit in the mouth of the horse. Amen? Amen. So you got the bit there and the reins, but on top of the horse you have a horse rider, equestrian, right? Guiding all that. With the rudder and the ship, you have a pilot guiding the rudder. So what he's really talking about isn't just the bit in the horse of the mouth or the rudder on the ship. He's saying behind that ship and the rudder, there's a pilot guiding it all. On that big old horse and those reins and that bit, there's a rider guiding it all. And what he's really getting at is your tongue is connected to a person controlling you to say the things you do and guiding your life. And the real key isn't just to change your word, it is to give Jesus control again. To get him on the horse, to make him the pilot, to make him be the one that you say what he says, to walk with him in your office, to walk with him at night, to say the things that he would have you to say. Because when the ship wants to go right and the pilot wants to go left, where that ship gonna go? It's gonna go where the pilot tells it to go. Take control, Jesus. Yeah. Take control of my heart. Take control of my mind. Take control of my soul. The words will follow. It's really about giving Jesus full control over who you are, heart, soul, and mind. And this is a spiritual thing then. I just got to get better. No, no, no. I need, I need to give Jesus more control. I need you to change your language. Some of you have been saying that. I just got to get better. No, you don't have to get better. In fact, you're not going to get better. So let's just stop. Let's just stop playing that game. Because for years, you've been trying to edit your words, and you're good for about three months. You take a word diet for about three months. And you're really, and you're not fooling anybody. Some of us know what to expect from you. You cannot control your words. Jesus has to control it. You cannot pilot yourself. Jesus has to be the pilot. You cannot be the one riding that horse. Jesus has to be the one guiding with that in mind, I think there are several things we can do to give Jesus the control. Remember, the initial vision that we gave wasn't just changing our words, it's, it's changing our hearts, amen? One of the first things that we have to do is we have to observe and admit that we are in a world of negative communication. Uh, Romans, Paul would say that all have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one is good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. Tell us what you really think, Paul. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Now, what is he saying? He's not talking about nine to five relationships. He's talking about when you really observe how people talk, 
the news, our news feeds, our friends, our family, our relationships, in those unedited moments, what we generally find is people promote fear. They promote anger. They promote jealousy. They promote comparison. The world around us has this negativity and, moreover, an ungodliness. And so, and even the music that we take in, the things we watch, in other words, you, we've got to start acknowledging that the words we're speaking aren't just coming from nowhere. We are only regurgitating what we are feeding ourselves, the people we are around. You ever, you ever just, I sound just like my mama. You do. Because you have received a style of communication. You sound like certain people. You talk like certain people. You are mimicking much of what you are receiving. So the first thing to do is to acknowledge that it's not just beginning with my words, it's beginning with my eyes, my ears, what I take in. I take in a lot of ungodly communication. But once we make that observation, then we should confess, as Isaiah said, woe is me, I'm lost. You know what? I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Do you notice what, what he said? He said, man, these people, man, these people sure are negative. Man, these people got unclean lips. But what did he start with? But I'm a man of unclean lips. And so we don't want to presume that the world around us is corrupted and we have not been tasting that corruption. I am a man of unclean lips. No, I am negative. No, I gossip. No, I lie. I have a problem. The problems aren't out there. The problem is right here. And I'm having a hard time controlling my words. And so what we must do is have some humility about this area and really just have some dependence and repentance. The psalmist puts it this way, and I wonder if you all would join me in getting this Psalm in your spirit, amen? Let the words of my mouth, would you say that? Let the words, of my mouth. say that again. Let the words of my mouth. One more time. Let the words of my mouth. When he says, let the words of my mouth, he is actually saying, I need you to put words in my mouth. You've got to give me words. Because on my own, I can't stimulate enough godly thought from my mind to my heart to my words. Let the words of my mouth. Then he says, and the meditation of my heart. Say that with me. And the meditation of my heart. One more time. And the meditation of my heart. Notice he doesn't just say words, but he says the meditation that's happening. There is something that is I'm contemplating on a heart level. Then lastly, he says, be acceptable in your sight. Say that with me. Be acceptable in your sight. One more time. Be acceptable in your sight. Now let's put all that together. Let the words of mine and the be So whose sight am I concerned about when I walk into a room? Whose sight am I concerned about when I'm in a private room? Whose sight am I worried about when I'm texting one-on-one? -on -one? Whose sight am I worried about in the quietness of my frustration when no one's going to know whose sight? Your sight. Say that with me one more time. Let the and the be one more time. Let the Now, saints, we all stumble in many ways, don't we? And this week, 
you're going to walk into your office and you're going to have a big joker moment. Boy, the big joker going to be right there. I mean, just a big joker. Just that person named Big Joker, they're going to be a big joker now. I mean, I'm saying there's some situations staring you right at the face that it just makes all your weaknesses come out and you, you can't beat it. And I'm, I want to tell you right now, you're going to fail. I'm just trying to tell you right now, there are places this week, because we all stumble here, that you, there's things you might not say, but there are things that you should have said that you won't say. So I just want to let you know that as you... Try to increase your efforts here. You're going to fail. And this is why the psalm goes on and says, O oh Lord, my rock. And the reason why the psalmist says my rock is it speaks to the unchanging nature of God. It speaks to the stability of God. Would you say, O oh Lord, oh Lord, my rock, my rock. My rock. That person didn't meet my expectations, but you are my rock. You are the most stable thing in my life, and as everything is corrupted and everyone around me is trying to corrupt me, you are my rock. But he also says, my redeemer. A redeemer is someone who is entrusted with releasing someone from oppression and harm or enslavement. A redeemer restores the rights and the freedoms of someone. And so look at this last Psalm all together, Psalm 19 and four, let's look at it all together. He says, oh Lord, my rock, you're my rock. Let me go back to you, but you're also my redeemer. The things I said, you can free me from them. I do not have to be in bondage in this area of my life. Oh, I stumbled, but what did I do? I got back up. Let's say this all together. Let the and the be oh Lord and my and, and this week, would you allow this psalm to penetrate at a heart level, to memorize this, not at a word level, but on a heart level? And the way that you will memorize it, the way that you will bring this in, it is allowing yourself to engage the word in the right occasion and to let it strengthen you. And as you do this, we're going to, Fortunately, unfortunately, this whole text is not done. We're going to come back to more of talking about taming the tongue next week. I know you're excited about that. But this is really about God's power to change you. I do not care how negative you've been. God can change your words. I don't care where you're from. I don't care what your mother was like. I don't care what your father was like. I don't care about, I don't care what you watch. I don't care what you take in. I don't care if you've always been that way. I know a person that can transform you overnight. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, my rock. And if I fail, my redeemer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for how you uniquely change us and make us more like you. So let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable, Father, in your sight. Oh, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. God, I want to make you my rock. I've tried to make people my rock and they just have not been able to be the foundation I need them to be. Lord, be my rock. And Lord, I've tried. I've really tried. I've tried to do better in my life. I've tried to be my own redeemer, but I cannot seem to set myself free. Be my redeemer. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.